Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. Today we're taking a look at a game called Nut Hunt, which I was opposed I wasn't thrilled about playing one because not a big fan of the <laughs> name. And also the squirrel in the front looks deranged. I love that though. I love that. I remember in the Actually, Kickstarter. This is, this is why you wanted to play. Yes, in the Kickstarter. This is like this cover, this is what drew me in. Mm -hmm. This is not what the game is like at all, actually. It shows this fox about to catch a squirrel. The fox never catches the squirrels. No. Because um, they're pansies. <laughs> actually, do you hate squirrels? I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of squirrels because I like to feed birds. Yeah. And squirrels are the enemy of anyone who feeds birds. I don't, I don't mind squirrels. I, I, think, I like black squirrels. Have you ever seen a black squirrel? No. Oh, they're so cute. They're black. Like chipmunks. I've never seen a black. Okay. Anyhow, great. it sounds amazing. So, Nut Hunt is a game for uh, what is it? Say? One to five players. You know, there's Ooh. a solo player type thing, and uh, here's how you play. You're gonna build this forest randomly. Although I always, I always feel like heart of the wood should be in the heart. But whatever. You're gonna build this out randomly. Um, this fox is gonna be out here, and players are gonna be choosing putting out their squirrels. You have four different kinds of nuts: walnuts, pecans, chestnuts, and acorns. You'll be starting with some of those, uh, uh, and then you're also going to get some of these objectives. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some concepts of the game before I go into how the game actually plays. Um, one of the concepts of the game is whenever you have three squirrels of your color together, you're going to remove those and build a nest. That's an important thing. Nests are worth two points at the end of the game. Also, there's something in this game called scattering. Uh, you can have squirrels in the same area. You can even have a squirrel where someone else builds a nest. But if someone ever else, let's say there's two black squirrels here, and I put this here and build a nest, you will force your opponent's squirrels to scatter. Also, if a fox moves into a spot, all squirrels scatter. Nests are not affected by this fox because you can hide from the fox. Whenever you scatter, you pick an adjacent spot that you're legitimately allowed to go into. You, you can't go to where the fox is. And let's say I will go move here. Both these players have to scatter. They can't also go to where the fox came from. There's also a few spots that you can't go into, like the frog pond. You can't enter that spot. But for the most part, you scatter. And if this black, if the black squirrels build a nest, a green squirrel would might scatter here. But later on, they can move back in here possibly, or put another squirrel in that spot. They might, if the fox moved here, I could scatter there. But scattering is going to happen as this fox moves around and you'll be running from the fox because the fox is trying to eat you. Also, I talked about these cards here, these objectives. So this says Muckville Marsh to Hickory Haunt. So I look, here is Hickory Haunt, and here's Muckville Marsh. Now that's a pretty hard one to do. And to score points right at the end of the game, I need to have a token in both those spots and connect it all the way there. And that could be any token. It could be a nest or a squirrel here connected to them. If I do that, at the end of the game, I will get four points. If I don't, I will lose two points. You might say, well, wait a minute, that's pretty far apart. Four points doesn't seem as useful as if, what if they were right next to each other? Well, this game also has a distance bonus, and so since there are three more tiles, I would get an extra three points. So this would actually be worth seven points for having those extra three tiles in between. Two tiles gives two points, one tile gives one point. If they're right next to each other, there's no bonus points. But if you don't connect them, it's always going to be minus two points. So that's how you get points in this game. Two points per nest and then points for completing or losing these. How does the game itself work? Well, first on your turn, you will mandatorily move the fox. You'll roll a die. You will look at the number here. This is placed next to the board. The fox moves down. Then in the spot where the fox went, you will look at the forage part there and you will get two nuts of that type. Well, lucky me, this is any two types. So I'll take any two nuts. But let's say I move to this spot, uh, I would take then only pecans or walnuts. And sometimes it's only one kind of nut. But you'll take two nuts. You can, if there's two different types, you can take one of each type or two of the same type. You have to do that in your turn. You then have one optional action. You can recruit a squirrel. Anywhere you want, you can put a squirrel you just have to pay the cost. In this one, I need one pecan and one walnut. If I want to put one in the fairy ring, I need three of the same. Um, there are some spots, or there's not two actually, where you cannot recruit. Some things are more difficult, like the giant footstool is four of the same, but of course, the, the cards that connect to the giant footstool are worth more points then. 
So that's one thing you can do in your turn. Another thing you can do is hassle a fox. If you're next to the fox, and you have, if you have a squirrel next to the fox, you can hassle that fox and like pull him in. So you can also do it if you have a nest there. And of course that's gonna scatter the people that are there, but you also get one nut of the spot the fox moved in. So it's a way to get extra resources. And sometimes it's a way, let's say I had two squirrels here, I might pull him in to force my squirrel there so that now I have a nest there. And finally, another optional action is you can take the top two cards of the objective deck, keep one, discard the other. Actually, you can keep both of them if you want to, but you have to keep, no, you can keep one of them, sorry, and you discard the other, but you don't have to keep either of them when you draw these cards. That's it. The game is over when someone builds four nests on the board. When that happens, we finished a round. Again, two points per nest, points for gaining or not gaining these. Most points is the winner of the game. So the game initially it had this concept like Ticket to Ride. Like, you're connecting routes. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know. It, it has a lot level. of like almost games in it. Right. And you're collecting resources to play stuff on the board. To yeah, recruit different squirrels and kind of expand, not your territory, but kind of grow your people. Animals. <laughs> Squir Strong squirrels. <laughs> Theme. <laughs> I went into this expecting it to be not a very good game. I read the rules and I was like, a random board doesn't sound very good. Random fox movement doesn't sound very good. And I came out of it enjoying it. <laughs> I... I was surprised at how much control you do have um, of moving the, because you got to run in there with the squirrel and be like, and get the squirrel to chase you, I mean, the fox to chase you. But also, the push your luck aspect of do you draw a lot of roots and yeah. try to complete as many as you can, or do you just forget roots in general and rush to build those nests? Because it's not a very high scoring game. It's you not, might, no. You might get like 13. I mean, right, it, it looks like you can get game. a lot of points for connecting those, but if you connect a route that's worth eight points, you've done nothing else the whole game. Correct, yeah. yeah. You might get the long, longest route bonus as well, but but that's it. Um, I, I don't think I could disagree with you stronger <laughs> about this. You say you're surprised by the amount of control. I kept waiting for that to happen. I kept waiting for that control. It's like there's got to be something that's not that doesn't just try to hurt you in this game. It, it's one of those, it, it feels like a take that game. I agree. But the game, but it's not take that player uh, driven. It's pl it take that game. Like the game actively works against you, which is fine in like a co-op game or something. But if it's in a, a competitive game like this and the game is actively working against one player, it just feels wildly unbalanced with the, ran the, ma the randomness is what makes it in unbalanced in the play. I guess I don't find it as problematic because oh. if the <laughs> if when the when the fox hits you, you do get to decide where your squirrel goes. So at most for me, I when so the fox is, when the fox <laughs> when the fox is wreaking havoc. So my my strategy in this game, I like I just put out tons of squirrels. Yeah. And the fox is just running around. I don't even want to build the nests. I'm just going to try to get as many roots done. So that's going to be messed up. Mm. It's going to be messed up both by the foxes and other players being jerks build, building nests. But that fox, every time he goes from a spot, I will push my squirrels to another spot, and hopefully, I still am connecting my roots. Hopefully. Yeah, but even if I but lose a couple points. probably not. But even if I lose a couple points, I've gained enough points from the other ones it's to overcome that. It's not a couple that. points, though. It's like you lose six points from not getting that route. No, plus no, no. You, two, only lose, plus... you only lose two points. Okay, well, whatever. The, well, you no, well, get. you lose the points because you didn't have the route completed, and if it was a six-point route. Oh, you count that as negative points? See, that makes yeah, my life easier. Yeah, that's negative emotional count, points. I don't count points that I didn't get as points I've lost because I never had them. You did have them, yeah. and then the fox took it on the last turn, and you went from having four routes completed to one route completed, hypothetically. Yes, okay, so let's say hypothetically I was a bad player. and um, <laughs> That was uncalled for. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Not the worst player in the Tower, but... Wait, who? I... <laughs> this is the top, oh, ten, no. top ten players in Dice Tower. Um, I can't do... <laughs> I'm way off topic here, but... I don't know. I just I found it to be a filler game for sure. It's not a heavy game. It's 30 minutes long, but I can see why you wouldn't be a fan of it. I also say this. I think the player counts on this one are wildly all over the place. Okay. A that's one fair. or two player game. Especially, let's let's start with two. One is a solo thing. That's different. Mm -hmm. A two player game. It's all about the fox 
and less about the players interacting. Correct. Yes. With three, three I think is the perfect number. Four, there's a little much too much players going on. And the fox will move around before you have a chance to really make another action. Yeah. And five is insanity. That's too much. It's insanity chaos. and boredom because it's so much change round or player to player. I mean, you do nothing on anyone else's turn. It's just, it's too much. I'm um, three, four, two, five. I don't play solo. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what's your ra <laughs> rating? Do you, do you really want to know? Well, it's like um, an eight or a nine is what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, negative. Um, so I'm going to come in at a three... <coughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> I wasn't doing that on purpose. <laughs> I'm going to get it. All right, my rating just went down. No, I'm, I'm going to come in at a three on this one. I, oh gosh, I wanted to like it. And I was frustrated at the beginning of the game, but it was it was fine because it was that typical take that kind of frustration. Where I was like, oh, I keep getting messed over. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then it was like, all right, you know, it, it was fine because that was in the spirit of the game. But by the end of the game, I was, I was frustrated for a completely different reason. The randomness is is too much there's not enough control in the game at all and and you keep saying that and you hope this works you hope this works right i'm a man of hope but that also means that it might not work if you're if you're hoping it's not like there's a 50 50 chance it's just it's it's so random and it's so hard to plan anything i i like the route building in it like you alluded to uh ticket to ride how it kind of has that same system i love that but in Ticket to Ride, you make the route, you claim it. It's, it's not until the end of the game. And then you're like, and you're you're holding four cards. I mean, I, I truly, you can go from 20 points in this game to negative points in this game in one move. And if that happens to be the end of the game, that feels like crap. <sighs> yes, I know you can. It happened. Yeah. It doesn't bother me because it's so fast. Because you... Because it didn't happen to you? No, I, I, I'm a, I, have, I have yet to win Nut Hut. Okay. Um, oh, that to me, that just, it that just feels out. bad. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it, it, I don't know. I, I feel like one of these days I'm going to play it and push my luck because I love push my luck at it. And one of these days I'm going to win big like the lotto. But because it's so short, it just doesn't affect but me. But everything is luck in it. I, again, maybe it's just not a game for me because it's everything is luck. It's a luck on which ones, which cards you get. It's a luck on where the fox goes. It's a luck on if you're going to have the route completed throughout the game. Um, and if somebody, when somebody in, uh, triggers that end, it ends instantly. There's no, like, one more final time or anything like that. So, anyway. Oh, I forgot to mention my score. It's a seven. I like it. Um, I really think, though, I mean, this is why we do these reviews, so you can see maybe which direction you might Who go in this. not play it with. I could see that if this was 10 to 15 minutes longer, I would feel closer to you. I really would. Okay, Because it's that. shorter, I don't mind. The... Components are nice. The cards are really good quality, and I like the little squirrels. It is. That's it was cute. really good production, especially for a Kickstarter. It didn't feel Kickstarter bloated, so I will give it that. Yes, that and nice. I think some people are going to like the take that nature, even though it is there is some take that nature. I I could definitely and maybe have been like, hey, Fox, come over here. I hope they messed up Camilla and then run. <laughs> I'm not saying that happened either. No, I'm that, just that saying that uh, these are things that score. can be done. So anyway, that's not hot. I'm Tom Basil. I'm Camilla Claghorn. Have fun uh, in the nope, forest. Nope.